what a way to start. My name is Mary Kay Casper, and I'm coordinator of uh, one of the programs at Washington County and Community Developmental Services, the Learning Network. I'm sitting here looking at these incredible faces. Poems are the song of the soul. They shine light and story in each of us. And for each of you, you get to tell your story. You get to shine your light. And I am so very proud that we can create opportunities for that. I want to thank my staff, who are incredible individuals and work tirelessly to offer these opportunities. And this wonderful program whose mission is to allow us to engage with each other and learn from each other and grow together. I'm just, I'm at awe. <laughs> it's like to sit here and to see all the people that have come to hear you because you're a part of the community that exists everywhere. And we need to demystify the myths about who we are in the world, about who you are in the world, and you're doing that tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I am internally grateful to be able to be here with you tonight and applaud who you are and the light that you carry to us and the gift that you give to yourself by writing poetry and doing art because that is a passion and a path to self-realization, to awareness and to bringing who you are in the world and your potential is so great. Um, I love you. That's all I can say. I love you all. Thank you. All right, our first dynamic performer tonight, who's shaking off the, right, shaking it off. She likes to freestyle with imagery. She's going to perform a couple poems just based on the images she wants to share. And you're going to do one about a unicorn and the one about birds. Birds. I'll hold that picture for you. Ladies and gentlemen, Helen. <laughs> My name is Helen Fagretz. My poem is about two, two lovebirds. Once upon a time, there was a lovebird, and it was a bluebird and a robin. They make a nest. Uh, they had a little baby girl bird, and they was happy to be together. My little story was a lovebirds. I hope you love this story. Bye, little lovebirds. I love you very much. Thank you. You want to do the Yes. Okay. I saw a unicorn once, and I wish it was my unicorn. I saw that he was so pretty. He was all white and he had a pink head. I love unicorns. Unicorns are my best friend. And I wish I had a unicorn be my best friend forever. And I'm, I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> and I wish he would always be my best friend forever. My little unicorn, I love you very much. I love you, every one of you. Have a good night and have a safe ride. Bye. Whenever somebody does a performance at the end
end of it, they get a flower. <laughs> 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 And now Montpelier native, the wonderful, the incomparable Rachel. From the seat of wherever. Well, you know something? It's nice to see all you guys here. I got one joke for you guys. What kind of what kind of music do bunny rabbits like? Yeah. <laughs> And I and I took two I took some words out so I circled them so I knew not to read them. Said it wasn't the right type of thing, right time for the those words to be here. Spring time in Vermont is the time of year when people look forward to getting out and enjoying weather, enjoying the weather, walking the dogs and going for walks, going with the kids. Uh, and husband, and time of year for mud season on the back row. But that is a good idea. But then you, you gotta look forward to getting stuck. <laughs> but if you have a four wheeler, you can get out good. Um, going on vacation with a family and kids. This is a time of year to get ready for planting flowers in a garden and time to do yard work and mow the lawn. People enjoy doing games and playing ball. Outdoors is so much fun to be out. Actually, I decided I'm gonna wait on the other story. Actually, maybe I'll attempt that other story. Yeah, my friend and my mother decided to roll a skate in a buffalo herd. And then they, <laughs> then they decided it was too rough. Then they went on to skate in the roller derby I, in Hollywood, California. The girls got rough with the other girls and started knocking them down. Then they roller derby got too much for them. Then they with the roller derby, and then they went on to something a lot safer, like baseball, played with the Red Sox. <laughs> all over the place. Then they went all, played all over the place. They had enjoyed playing baseball. They ate out all the time from baseball. They decided to retire and stay home with the family. The, f the kids liked seeing them, like watching them on TV when they played. My mom and my friend played for the Red Sox. <laughs> and Next, I would like to introduce Scott. Educate others about autism. 
I think that it is important for everyone to advocate for their own rights, but sometimes it is helpful for others to support them. I have three poems I would like to share. Babbling Brook Cool relief on a hot summer day welcomes you to the river. Boulders of every size shows you the way. Fish fly through the fast moving water while tadpoles take their swimming lessons. The smell of freshly cooked fish and crisp clean air is a celebration for my nose. Slippery rocks under my feet as the cool water rushes by. The water reflects a hundred shades of green from the breeze overhead. Water tiptoes onto the land. The water rushing down from the mountain hurries on its way slowed down by the boulders like the five o'clock rush hour. Found in the dark, lost on my journey to find myself, I follow the light of the world hoping to go beyond my wildest dreams. Living today in the moment but trying not to worry about what the future might bring. Though my autism loudly affects my ability in certain pieces, my ability to have meaning through my hopes and dreams takes over. Poor me, I might say, in my mind thinking about the limits that have been set for me, but my heart is full of love for opportunity. Grew opportunity comes from within, looking out through a wide lens. You must be open in your heart and head, or the road that lies in front of you will be dark and dim. Tears of disconnection. It is the old beat molds, not the key to my house, but the beat of my heart. Poorly molded keys long for strongly molded locks. I think that the old keys are the most beautiful. I understand good keys when I see them. I see that like keys in the night we seem to want the same thing. If the key is too rusted it will not open it needs to be precisely cut to work in that strongly molded lock. It is like the beat pattern a rhythm that moves to my heart perfect beat that pounds systematically. Colors. It's 
only to let our inner. Only let our inner light shine through. Light shine through. Many trial lead us over mountain. In our life, only to come through to a better place. Thank you. Yes, we want her. And now the man, Chris, and his advocate, Annabelle. Chris Medina, I am glad to be here sharing my poetry with you. I want to share with you that I have autism and use the facilitator to get my innermost thoughts out. I have three poems to share with you. We're there? Autism, a prison, a hell, a fiery depth from which I will rise, obsessive, compulsive, ritualistic, weird, behaviors I need to control or survive, love, empathy, acceptance, Feelings I need to experience. Yet no matter how difficult. It is who I am. And I won't change a thing. It is what has made me unique. A living, breathing human being. I am. I hate it when people stare at me. I mean really gawk at me. Don't they think I know that they are looking at me, analyzing my every action, laughing at me, wondering what I am going to do next. I hate being judged by my autistic behaviors. People don't know who I really am inside, that I am smart and have the same feelings they do. They quickly determine that I must be retarded or just plain weird. Some may even feel sorry for me and so very few people ever make the end of war. When I find someone like Ben, who wants to get to know me, wants to hang out as and spend time with me, wants to learn to type with me and help me through this labyrinth, I am elated. My mother and sister have always been there for me, but I have never had any real friends. There have been many people my age that have tried to get to know me, but they usually give up. I have a hard time reciprocating, so the relationship is usually one-sided. Ben understands me and he not only accepts me, but values our relationship. 
I just wish people wouldn't stare. I hate it when people I love it when people care about others. It is a gift we must give freely. It is what makes the world a harmonious place. Don't people realize the power they have within their reach to make a difference, to bring a smile, a bit of laughter in the air. Don't they know when people care? There is nothing one can't do. The possibilities are endless. It is what comforts people, makes them whole. The people in my life have been my lifeline. No one really knows how powerful a human connection can be, sometimes not until years later. I still remember when a boy in my class helped me to find a quarter I had lost, my milk money. Or the girl who sat next to me on the bus when no one else would. I still remember a boy at my church who chose to stay behind and help me tie my shoes when everyone else went outside to play. Or the girl who called my home to see if I was okay after fainting at school that day. I may not be able to recall all of their names, but I remember their face. I remember how special they made me feel. I love it when... There was a woman named Emily Dickinson. She was a famous poet. She saw ladies and gentlemen wearing nice suit and evening gown in a ballroom. There is a large disco ball with high value ceiling. There is the murmur of people laughing and dance. There is classical music playing in the back of room. A gentleman whispering sweet nothing in her ear. She tastes the food and drink the wine. She can smell perfume like roses. And she can smell the coffee and smell almost like roasted peanuts. They walk in the park and they came home and sat down on sofas. Her heel is blistering foot 
and he kissed her on the mouth and said goodbye. Thank you very much. Next reader will be up shortly, but I thought I would share one of our group collaborative poems we had a lot of fun doing. I would see the king and queen, lemon and milk, walk amongst horses, hummingbirds, and gardens, play practical jokes flying to Florida, travel in planes, fly to the moon, tell off the president, fly to a football game. <laughs> Dance with a girl flying home. Look at people with poverty over the Alps and give them what they need. Fly and bring this warm travel. Hang out with a Dalai Lama unicorn. Walk amongst coyotes, move. Move through the sky to every beautiful mountain. Play and hide, and seek, make faces, walk on my shoulders under a bedroom door. Remember that? Yeah, remember that. Wear doll clothes while in a doll house. <laughs> and make igloos out of snowballs, and go to the candy farm, and take a bite out of everything. <laughs> There's more. A drip of coffee, eat an egg, archaeological explorer, tiny acrobat. Live in a tiny house and take as many tiny belongings to make this tiny house cozy. Slide on the back of a bird and ride like a butterfly. Good job, guys. Our next reader is Elizabeth. Unfortunately, a very talented woman named Erin was not able to make it tonight. In her stead, I will do my best to give you this rendition of her amazing poem. The Seasons of My Heart, a love song by Erin. Spring in London, in the rose garden parks, kids are laughing and dreaming. Earth and future, I am blessing birds flying in the sky, over the ocean. Without going away on a trip to a weekend family beach, heart seasons spring and summer, love shows flower days, be summer and swimming days, singing verses to weekends and new days. I see me playing with birds. I am walking in the rainforest. I see the rivers, lakes, and ocean. Beautiful, Aaron.
Stay there for Walter. I just want to say to Walter, thank you for pushing me every day of the week. I cannot do this without you. I love you with all my heart. about I lost almost every day so in my in my mind is about imagine <laughs> <laughs> okay it, mine is about it's good. mine's about walking like when I walk when I get home from walking from staff and from uh, doing that work I mine's about my imagination so mine is called about my walk here we go <laughs> <clears throat> when the wind blows, it feels like my family in heaven are talking to me. When the sun shines, I can feel them shining down on me. The birds are singing happy songs to me. The snow is slowly melting soon. The rain sounds like Mother, Nat <gasps> Mother Nature is crying for me. When I walk, I start to feel good about myself and my self-confidence is built is starting to build up. Thank you, everyone. Okay, our last poet is one of my heroes, and his name is Connor.
Hogwash. You don't see it. You see the result. This soul does try. The body defies. Constant talk of war. You try to understand. You can't imagine. I try to describe. I cannot fully explain. It's called autism. I call it hogwash. I experience the autism. You get the hogwash. You see hogwash movement. Hear hogwash noises. Look at my hogwash actions. Half of my life is not real. But typing is my blood. I pour my heart into poetry. Oh yes. I pour it out. This is the real Connor. Ignore the hogwash. Thank you all for coming. This is very touching. I'm, I'm at a loss for words. And uh, Helen is just going to give us all one more parting word of advice on why we should think about poems and poetry and sharing and giving. And she's going to close the night out for us all. We'll still be here for questions to mingle a little. We have lots of Shockwave magazines to give away. I want to thank again my supervisor, my coworkers, my wonderful friends that give me like the best job to drive to in the morning. And uh, this library and poetry, Poem City, is just utterly amazing. Wouldn't you say so? Yes, Rock. All right, let's give some advice to these people. <laughs> Everybody, everybody should write poems. It's really neat and fun. I wish everybody else write poems too. Please, for our country and everybody will do good. Please write. At end. This is Helen. Goodbye. <laughs> some books out there to help out some other people who is like us and they can even uh, do some arts and send them right there at Learning Network and there's some books out there too. I want to say to the teachers how wonderful that they are to me because they really pushed me to do this tonight. And I worked so hard on that poem. It took me a long time to push to get myself to do this, but I did it. And I want to thank Walter, I want to thank my staff, Susan, I want to thank Mary Kay, all, everybody out, everybody that was here tonight, thank you. And Erin. <laughs> Yeah, it was all nice, awfully nice of you all to come. And it's nice that Aaron and Walter 
does a good job at that learning network. <laughs> A1 Pope of the Heat, King of the Hill. No. <laughs> Take this freebie. And make sure when you get the book, Shockwave, take it home so you can look at it and then put yourself on a mailing list. You're not only doing a good deed for yourself, you're doing a good deed for everybody else, supporting everybody with intellectual and whatever kind of disability they have. It's a good job. Here, here. And they enjoy it. I, I wanted to read one poem. Aaron and I were talking about this poem, and I'm just, where is it? Um, I mean, this is amazing, okay? This is professional work, everybody. This is amazing work. And um, we need to get the word out. So it's called Breakfast by Betty, Becky. This morning, I'm going to eat a TV. Walking to the sound of the TV sizzling smells delicious like electricity. Sitting down, putting the napkin in my lap, grabbing my fork, beginning to eat. Chomp, chomp, chewing it up, swallowing. It tastes like knowledge. Some wire gets stuck between my teeth. Picked it out with the plug in. I get zapped, yipe, yikes. There was a click, a whirl, and buzzing. The TV turned on in my stomach. A sneeze slipped out, ouch. The channel changes. I belch, and the channel changes again. <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs>